So, so what I'm reading is from Jeremiah chapter one, and um, it's Jeremiah's testimony where he says, "The word of the Lord." I'm reading from verse four. Then the word of the Lord came to me saying before i formed you in the womb i knew you before you were born i sanctified you i ordained you a prophet to the nation so we see um the lord uh, declaring jeremiah to be uh, and commissioning him and he's saying i'm ordained you as a prophet to the nations and then we see um uh, just going down to you know then all that conversation happens where he says lord i'm i'm young i'm a youth um and the lord says do not say that Etc. Whatever I command you, you shall speak. Um, verse nine, verses nine and ten. Then the Lord put forth His hand and touched my mouth and said to me, "Behold, I have put my words in your mouth. See, I have set this day, I have this day set you over the nations and over the kingdoms, to root out and to pull down, to destroy and to throw down, to build and to plant." And uh, you know, the wonderful thing is that uh, He fills Jeremiah's mouth with His words. He commissions him. Then he fills him with his word, and he says, "This day I have, you know, this is what I have set you to do uh, over the nations, over the kingdoms, which means over the different people groups, over the over the different, uh, you know, people uh, living on the earth. This is what I'd like you to do. Uh, I want you to do. Uh, my word will accomplish certain things, but this is my word in your mouth. Right when you speak it, when you minister it, when you declare it, not only will you." root out which means not only will you uproot and destroy and throw down pull down certain things but you will also plant and build and uh, and nurture and establish right so um so, so it, it is so with us as well because uh probs very plainly declares that uh, death and life are in the power of the tongue right so it's it's not uh you know, it's just it's not just that we speak words and it it's it gets done but if we speak or when we repeat uh when we speak forth from a place of faith um the words that god has declared the word that god is quickening right? and that is what uh happens there is a uprooting that happens there is a pulling down that happens and there is also a nurturing a planting establishing that happens right there's a building that happens so um so today um you know let's just acknowledge that and and uh, whatever the lord is quickening to our hearts let's be you know careful to speak that over our lives sing it over our lives joyfully uh, you know shout it um, and just whisper that over our lives right let's let's do that father we thank you lord we thank you lord uh, as it as you did with jeremiah lord and so you have called and commissioned us, each one of us, Lord. And Lord, we thank you that you continue to Lord, quicken your word to us, continue to fill us with your word. Lord, as we intentionally expose ourselves, Lord, present ourselves before you to receive your word, Lord, we pray that, um, Lord, we will speak that over our lives, God, that we will speak it and we know that it will accomplish the purpose for which it is lord spoken and declared god lord maybe be careful to sing it maybe be careful to whisper it maybe be careful to proclaim it oh god over ourselves over life situations and circumstances god lord maybe proclaim and declare your word father god yes lord over ourselves father god our identity of who we are lord and uh, a calling master that we will be sure um and uh, lord steadfast in it oh father god yes father god Lord, even right now, I just pray, may there be a renewal, a renewing, oh God, uh, that we will not grow weary, Father God, while we are doing this, that we will not be passive, that we will be, Lord, um, yes, Lord, that our spirit will be sharp, that we will be sharp in our heart, in our mind, Father God. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. We come at this day, this time into your mighty hands, and we pray that you'll continue to speak to us and minister to us, God. We thank you. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay, so um, today we are uh, we're going to continue from where we stopped, which is um, the restoration of the soul, receiving healing and deliverance. So we looked at a couple of things. Um, you know, uh, just wanted to reiterate that that healing and deliverance uh, comes through sanctification and consecration, meaning when we set ourselves apart, right? when we set ourselves apart uh, on 
uh, to the purpose of God. When we when we remove ourselves, you know, consecrate uh, means to to or sanctify means to set being set apart. Right. So you remove yourselves from uh, whatever is contaminating. Right. When we know, okay, this is contaminating. When we remove ourselves, distance ourselves. Um, from that which contaminates that which pulls us down now that's one part of it but we can consecrate ourselves unto god which means we move ourselves uh, towards the uh, towards towards him right who sanctifies so then we see that there is uh, the minute we do that there is a clearing there is a freeing that happens uh, because of his presence and power right so healing and deliverance happens Emotional healing, uh, deliverance happens when we sanctify ourselves unto God. When we, when we, uh, you know, when we do that continually, you know, it's an ongoing thing. So we saw that. The second thing we saw was that uh, healing and deliverance happens because of God's presence, um, and uh, and and also um, through the anointing of the Holy Spirit, right? Which is the presence and power of the Holy Spirit. We see. We we read that the anointing oil you know breaks the yoke which is the work of the holy spirit ministry of the holy spirit so through the anointing of the holy spirit and the presence of god uh, there is the healing and deliverance that happens and also healing and deliverance happens when we actively resist right we, we read uh, james 4 7 says submit to god resist the devil and he will flee from you so there is that active resistance that is required on our part, where we say, because of our authority and our identity um, and what has been given to us, so we say, you know, this is it. You cannot cross that line. You cannot come any further, and you have no authority, uh, nothing at all to to do this. You, know, you cannot influence. So we actively resist the work of the enemy. Right? It's the work of the uh, powers of darkness, and and then. You know, we 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 experience healing and deliverance, right? So, um, so we're just going to go through a, a series of steps. Let me just um, share that also. So we're going to go go through a series of uh, steps, uh, the way by, by which we can actually walk in in this kind of sanctification and uh, uh, and and consecration really unto God, right? So. Um, let's look at that um so this is something that uh, it's not a you know at the outset to say that it's not a formula it's not a you know uh, these are a series of steps guidelines and uh, definitely it is uh, you know it is scripture all through uh, and it is uh, you know act of ongoing act of surrender and uh, so it's this is something that uh, that we can do uh, personally for ourselves and also lead others um, in this right minister to others in this and uh, so let's uh, let's look at that right um, let me just share that okay Okay, that is coming up. Yeah, so let's look at the first one. First one is, of course, the um, uh, first step is to repent. Right? We all know what repentance is. Repentance is to turn away, turn away from something that we are doing, and uh, it's a one eighty degree turn. So it's a choice. It's a decision that we make. Okay? Now, yes, of course, it will. Uh, involve some emotion in the sense it it will involve some remorse um but that's not the whole thing right like we can feel remorseful uh, or we can you know feel bad about something that we have done and then not really repent right um so repentance is actually turning away okay repentance is actively turning away um so so that's the thing right um it is to turn away completely. It is to uh, make a choice, make a decision, and turn towards God. Okay, so turn away from whatever is wrong and turn towards God. Okay, 
So that's something that we can uh, definitely do on an ongoing, uh, ongoing as an ongoing journey, right? And uh, and the best thing is this: you know, we have the indwelling presence of the Holy Spirit, and God speaks to us and shows us and kind of shines a light on what are the things that we need to repent from. Okay, so we uh, we can just completely rely on that, right? So you don't have to just rack our brains and say, God, what is it? What is it? Just depend on the Holy Spirit, right? And say, Lord, whatever it is that you are showing, whatever it is you're telling me to repent from, Lord, I, I want to do that, right? And there are certain things that we know already. We know, you know, we know that we've been harboring this ill will. We've been having these thoughts. We've been speaking these words. We you know. There, there are things that we know that we've already already know of, already conscious of, you know. Um, so we repent of that. We confess and repent of that, right? Okay. So let's uh, let's take that first step. So this, uh, you know, this we're just going to take some time to do this. And uh, so maybe if you're, um, you know, if you're sitting in a quiet place, uh, that's very conducive to doing this. You can close your eyes and um, you can, you know, we can go through this, go through these steps. Um, but if you're going to be in a very busy place and you're still trying to listen to the class, then uh, then you can watch the video later, right? Um, and and do this. Okay. So let's let's take take some time to to repent. You know, um, so we can say we can pray something like this. We can say, Lord, I confess and repent of uh, wrong thoughts, wrong thought patterns. I repent of uh, wrong things that I've been believing about yourself, Lord. Wrong things that I've been believing about myself, about others. I repent of that. Okay. So if there's anything specific that you want to repent of, you know, you can tell the Lord that. You can say, Lord, uh, this is what I've been believing about you. Or this is what I've been harboring in my heart. God, this is what I've been, you know, I've been continuously walking in, and, and so God, I I repent from that. Okay, um, so you acknowledge to God, acknowledge to Him, and say, "Yes, Lord, I I you know I acknowledge, I confess that I've been doing this, but I I want to make a choice now. I want to make a decision now to turn away from that. You know, it could be words that we've been speaking. I mean, speaking. Sorry." We, we, words that have been speaking over ourselves, uh, words that we've spoken over maybe our family members. Um, you know, if you are aware of anything, you can just specifically say, Lord, I'm sorry that I said this. Uh, I'm sorry that I've been speaking this, believing this, and declaring this over uh, even my own family members, over my spouse, over my relatives, and over my children. Lord, I, I confess. I shouldn't have, and I repent of that. Okay. Uh, if there's any sin, if there's any anything, any act of sin that we've been habitually engaged in, you know, things that we've been seeing, what we've been watching, maybe something, something on the net, something on you know TV, or uh, something that we've been reading, um, maybe what we've been listening to, it could be anything of that, or it could be something, uh, whatever it is, you know. It, with the Holy Spirit is pointing out, you could just say, "Lord, I'm I'm sorry that I did this, and I know that it is, uh, it's not honoring you, it's not pleasing you, it's grieving you. I'm aware of that, so, God. So, so I I repent of that, Lord. I repent of that. I make a decision not to do it, not to engage in it. Yes, Lord, thank you. Um, just ask the Lord, Lord, is there anything that I need to be repenting of? And uh, if he's showing something, you could make a decision. Right? Okay. Okay. The next step, you know, we ask for forgiveness. Okay. We looked at that scripture, one John chapter one verses seven to nine. If we was a seven to nine, if we confess our sin you know he is faithful and just to forgive us of all unrighteousness so 
he is faithful he is just to forgive us of all unrighteousness so we can you know we can confess uh, he's not going to make fun of us he's not going to ridicule us for confessing it but he's going to actually forgive right so we can do that we can just ask for forgiveness um also romans chapter 5 and verse 8 while we were yet sinners but we are still sinners christ died for us and that's how much he loves that's how real his love is so tangible and so practical while we were yet sinners so so yes when we confess he is faithful to forgive right so so why don't we take this time to just ask for forgiveness say lord we ask for your forgiveness we ask for your mercy god ask for your forgiveness because we have hurt you we have dishonored you oh god and so lord we ask you will forgive that you will cleanse that you will wash us god and even as we ask for forgiveness um what really gives us that confidence the lord will forgive is uh, a completed work of christ on the cross you know, that is what makes us free that is what makes us whole the completed work of christ on the cross so right now as we go before him uh, put our trust in him and say god yes lord we come before you we believe in the full and final and completed work on the cross so what did he what did he complete on the cross what did he finish on the cross he took our sin he took took our sickness he took every curse on that cross we know that the cross is a historical you know fact what happened on the cross history never disproves that but we also know that there is a spiritual significance of what happened on the cross there was not just a physical death that happened but he carried something of significance something that was hindering us from from him from walking with him and the bible calls it sin and so he called he carried our sin the consequence of it the outworking of it everything he carried upon himself so uh, believe in the finished and final work on the cross and we can pray something like this heavenly father i believe that the lord jesus died on the cross for me died for me on the cross shed his blood for me and i know that i'm washed and redeemed by his blood i know that i'm made whole through what he did what he actually suffered on the cross so that i could be healed i could be made whole so we can we can right now you know talk about those things those areas that the cross has covered right maybe it's a stubborn sin maybe it's a, you know some part of our temperament that we are just prone to maybe it is something like fear or uh, worry or anger and rage um or it could be some some act of sin right or it could be something physical that is that keeps manifesting in our body you know some symptom um some levels in our bodies that you know like maybe blood sugar or whatever you know it could be some parameters which are just off which the cross has actually covered right as i have to read this four and five you know he carried our grief he carried our pain how it talks about things that are in the emotional realm things that are in the physical realm so he carried it upon himself and the reason is that by his stripes we are made whole so let's let's believe and receive right now right let's believe and receive right now let's say lord i thank you that you carried this on the cross Yes, I believe that. 
Yes, I believe that. There's no, there's nothing that we can argue against that, God. There's no logic, there's no reasoning that we can bring against the finished work of the cross. For you have so plainly stated it, God. Thank you that we've been, Lord, uh, you've taken every curse, as Galatians declares, so that the blessing of Abraham might come upon us in Christ Jesus. Lord, we thank you that Lord, whatever be the nature of the act, sinful act, O oh God, or Lord, whatever be the Lord intensity, O oh God, the frequency, O oh God, of that attack from the enemy, Lord, we thank you that the cross covers that. We thank you that your shed blood covers that. And so we can boldly come and say, yes, this very thing that is troubling me, bothering me, is covered by the finished work of the cross. The work of the cross is complete. There is nothing that is incomplete about the finished work of the cross. It is finished, the Lord declared. So God, we, we believe that. And this morning we receive, Lord, we receive for ourselves, Lord. We receive for ourselves, Lord. Lord, the victory, Lord, that you have accomplished, God. We receive for ourselves, God, the, the healing, O oh Father God, that you are extending towards us, God. We receive for ourselves, O oh God, the freedom, O oh God, from all these emotional bondages, O oh Father God. The freedom that you are extending towards us, Lord. We thank you, Lord. We thank you. We receive it, Lord. We receive it by faith, Father God. We thank you for what was accomplished, and we receive it, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father God. Thank you, Lord. We thank you. Now, now the, the next step, step is a little, um, you know, it, it's very important. And sometimes it's um, emotionally difficult, right, because of the nature of uh, of hurt that someone else could have done for us okay um so maybe someone hurt us maybe someone uh, intentionally you know wronged us um just as christ forgave us when we were yet sinners right? um, we need to release forgiveness we need to extend the same forgiveness so that we are not bound excuse me we are not hurt or we are not bound or we are not imprisoned by any grudge um we're not Im imprisoned by that so um releasing forgiveness actually releases us so we actively forgive and so uh, something for us to um remember and something that will uh, help us is that you know when we forgive we are not saying that what they did was wrong or what they did was right right we are not condoning that act that was done okay so because some of it could be very traumatic maybe somebody abused us physically emotionally abused us continually there's a barrage of negative words that were spoken uh, maybe they hurt us in a physical sense, it was, uh, you know, it was uh, domestic violence. It was a violent attack, and uh, we find it very difficult to forgive, right, that person or a group of people, right. Um, but if we would make that decision, make a choice to forgive, as Christ forgave us, right? They, they may not, you know, these people, they may not have. Uh, ask for forgiveness if we can release them if we can release them you know, from having a hold on us and how do they have a hold on us through a grudge through an offense right we so we release that when we release forgiveness we release them from having a hold on us emotionally like there is freedom that comes when we actually release forgiveness so um so we can do that. We can pray something like this, right? We can pray, Lord Jesus, I receive healing for the trauma and the adverse or unexpected experiences that I've gone through that have hurt me and left me in pain. So we can actually, you know, if you've not told him what it was, right? he knows it, but then we can actually 
spell it out, you can even state it right now. This was caused, this pain was caused. This is what I underwent, God. You know, maybe we even did not even acknowledge the extent of pain that we went through. So we can acknowledge that. Maybe it was a sense of shame, you know, sense of intense sadness um, that we experienced because of you know, whatever we went through. But we can acknowledge that before the Lord. And uh, and we can say, Lord, yeah, we release forgiveness. We release forgiveness to those who have hurt us knowingly, unknowingly. And, and we can take this time to actually specifically you know, mention the names of people, right? We can mention them by name. Say, Lord, I, I release forgiveness to this person. You mention the name of the person or what they did. You, you, you mention that very act, right? What they did, maybe it was something physical, maybe it was something emotional, maybe it was something violent that was done. So uh, say, God, <clears throat> um, but what was done, what was spoken, God, this very thing that they did, God, God, I release forgiveness. So just remember that we are not saying that what they did was right, but we are releasing forgiveness, We're saying, God, I forgive. I forgive, Lord. And the example is Christ himself forgave us. So, you know, you, you, the minute we step and step up and do that, we when we release forgiveness, then there is something that we can receive. You know? It's very simple. If we're holding something in our hands, both hands are full. We are holding it tight. Um, you know, we cannot receive it. There is no space to receive something. But the minute we open up our hands and and release what we are holding in our hands, then there is that space to receive. Uh, so it is with forgiveness. You know, we hold tightly, and our hands are full. It could be hurt. It could be grudge. It could be, you know, the, all those painful things that we are holding on to, and we are not, you know, receiving healing. We're not receiving restoration and wholeness because of, you know, because our hands are full. So today, you know, this morning, you can just release forgiveness. Okay, at least open up those hands. Maybe as a, you know, as an act, you can just put your hands up and say, "Lord, I, my hands are open, God. I want to release forgiveness, God. I don't want any of those bitterness and things to have a hold on me." Right? So be specific. You can also pray, you know, Lord, um, I receive healing right now. I receive healing. Even as I release forgiveness, God, based on your word, God, forgive as we would like to be forgiven, as we are forgiven. So, Lord, we are releasing this forgiveness based on your word, based on your instruction. And so, God, we, we know that we can expect to be restored emotionally. Lord, in the deepest part of our being, God, where we've been hurt, O oh Master, we can expect healing and wholeness, God. So we receive that, Lord. We receive that, Father God. Yes, Lord, we, we receive healing for unmet expectations, disappointments, and... Uh, even rejection from people, God, we receive healing for all that. We receive healing for that, God. All those regrets and pains and disappointments and rejections, we just receive healing, Lord. Receive healing, Father God. All that sense of shame, oh God, I just pray for, Lord, your work of your spirit, oh God, to just wash us, Lord. Your word to just wash us, Father God. Yes, Lord, we receive that. Receive that in Jesus' name. Um, let's also pray for for ourselves. You know, uh, many times we we have not forgot forgotten and we're not forgiven our own selves personally. We're still beating ourselves over and over again. 
and whenever we remember those those times or those things we just still you know we the, the regret and the pain um and and when we revisit and when we hit, hit ourselves you know we just need to rem remember that we we cannot change the situation uh, something that we have done something that we are ashamed of um you know something that caused others pain maybe something that you know uh, kind of destroyed others lives whatever it is now there is no change of that we cannot revisit the past and change that but definitely we can move forward and uh, in in making our life better and others lives better you know we can actually move forward and we need to we need to move forward right so and how can we move forward if we are still anchored to that regret you know, if you are still chained to that regret of the past okay some wrong decision some wrong choices um you know it was a mistake maybe it was intentional maybe it was you know whatever reason right but we cannot stay chained to that right we need to move forward and for that we need to just as christ forgives us you know, one john one again is going back to that he is faithful to forgive us so can we forgive ourselves uh, we need to because whom christ has forgiven you know we have no right to stay in that place of unforgiveness and if if the lord has forgiven us then we have no right whatsoever to to not forgive ourselves right so so thing is to declare and say okay god you know this is what i did this is what i'm ashamed of but lord i receive forgiveness i receive forgiveness i forgive myself lord. as you have forgiven me i forgive myself thank you that you are bigger than all the mistakes that i've made you are greater than all the you know sometimes the biggest regret regret is uh, because of these choices and certain things we had to you know our life took a different turn and because of which there was a lot of time that was you know that that particular path because of that consequence took away a lot of time and to come back to where we are now or we are still in that place of coming back because of the wrong choices and so whatever it is you know god is bigger than that and god is a restorer so um just state it and say lord i'm sorry for what i did but i receive forgiveness for that and i receive forgiveness for this very thing and i forgive myself for this what i did i forgive myself for this wrong decision and and you know even as we even as you stated you know all these kinds of emotions just come up you know even this that thinking about that that very thing you know that you're ashamed of or what you did for yourself that uh the decision that you did you made decision that you made or that very act you know it stirs up all kinds of emotions right and you again you're thinking okay that was foolish of you to do that and you know, can we just receive what the lord is extending and say lord i receive wholeness healing and i forgive myself god i forgive myself lord hey most so much take care of you papa hey most in the nation i am in the city of give myself for oh god and lord even as things are set right oh god we just want to move forward in the, in the things lord that you have for us god. move forward in the things god and what will really you know empower this decision to forgive ourselves is when we when we when we hold on to the truth of god's word right uh, when we hold on to the truth of god's word and we say okay god what you are saying you know about us what you declared about me i hold on to that as the truth um this reading from john 17 and verse 17 says sanctify them by your truth your word is truth and these are the words of the lord saying lord let them let your people be sanctified set apart by truth and your truth and your word it is truth your word is truth so god we thank you thank you for the truth that's in your word you know we thank you for your word father god hallelujah we thank you thank you and uh you know again reading from john chapter 
says, if you abide in my word, you are my disciples indeed, and you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Right? We abide in him, and his words abide in us. And uh, this truth will set us free. Right? So whatever area that we fell in, whatever area that, you know, what is God's word? declaring about that very thing what is god's word declaring what is god declaring about that right we maybe it's something to do with our lives maybe something to do with our future we know jeremiah 29 11. um we know john chapter 10 and verse 10. jeremiah 29 11 talks about the, the plans that he has for us the thoughts that he has for us um, to give us a hope in the future right john chapter 10 and verse 10 talks about the very intentions of the lord his desire, his will, to give us life and life in its fullness. So anything about the future that we've been, you know, we've been bothered about and about ourselves, and our future and our family's future, and you know, just embrace God's word, just be anchored in God's word. Right? The very thing that was jeopardized by our action, the very thing that was, uh, you know, uh, that we it, maybe that was destroyed because of our of our wrongdoing of our wrong thinking of a wrong choice you know even as we forgive ourselves of it even as we ask the lord to forgive us and received forgiveness because he is faithful and, and we are not holding a you know any kind of uh, we're not beating ourselves or any we're not holding any kind of grudge against ourselves even as we do that we hold on to the truth of god's word we're holding on with a vengeance we're holding on with a with a passion the truth of God's word, because it is true, then it, the truth of God's word releases us, sets us free. So any kind of thing that we've been holding on to, let the truth of God's word be that it is the substitute, it is the uh, it is it is what unseats lies. So that's the next thing. Um, you know, we're going to talk about renouncing lies, but whatever whatever things Maybe we've been feeling low. Maybe we've been feeling rejected. Maybe it's a sense of insecurity. Let's go back to the Word of God, and uh, maybe we can spend some time just reading um, uh, some of these references. We go into uh, Psalm 118. Psalm 118 verses 21 and 22. Um, I will praise you, for you have answered me and have become my salvation. The stone which the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. This is this is what happened to him. The, the stone which the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. So, well, the Lord was rejected by men, but he, you know, he accomplished something, and uh, he is indeed our salvation. Um, so, if we are going through anything uh, of feeling of rejection, know that that he has gone through it uh, already. And, uh, and the thing is this, that he receives us. He receives us right now. Right? He receives us um, and uh, he does not reject us. He receives us because of the shed blood of Christ. Right? Um, Proverbs 3 verse 4 and it um, says, uh, verses 3 and 4, let not mercy and truth forsake you, bind them around your neck, write them on the tablet of your heart, and so find favor and high esteem in the sight of God and man. Trust in the Lord with all your heart, and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge Him, and He shall direct your paths. Right. So trust in the Lord with all your heart, his when when you say trust in the Lord, of course, trusting in His word. Um, verse seven also: Do not do not be wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. It will be health to your flesh and strength to your bones. So um, we receive the word of God. Maybe we can spend time some time later as well about the word of God. What is the word of God stating about this situation? What is the word of God stating about my life? And so I want to be rooted in that, right? So any lie of the enemy, anything that the enemy has spoken, any lie, uh, reject that lie. 
renounce that lie. Right? We renounce it and we declare the truth of God's word. Any lie, what is the what is the lie that we've been believing? Just take some time to just ask the Lord, Lord, is there any lie about it? Could be about myself, it could be about yourself, it could be about uh, you know, it could be very subtle, right? It can be uh, about something that we have you know, we we used to be strong in, and then maybe we have, we begin to doubt that, and uh, uh, and the enemy seems to you know. Uh, have a subtle work or inroad into that very area, so we, we'll, you know, we can come back to God and say, Lord, you know, I, I renounce that lie, I renounce it, I, and uh, yeah, I confess, I renounce it, and I receive, I receive it, God, I receive healing and restoration in that very area, and I. Just want to be rooted in your word. So, so what is it? You know, many times a lie manifests itself as fear. Right? It manifests itself as fear. That's one way to find out. Okay, um, because uh, the word of God brings, develops, or builds faith in us. Okay, um, not saying that we will not experience fear as human beings. You know, that's that's an emotion that sometimes it protects us. Right? But if it's a fear that's crippling us from journeying into the things that God has, has for us, um, if uh, you know, then we need to really look in and we see you know, what am I believing about this thing that is causing fear in my life? And what am I believing about my, you know, maybe my future, maybe the future of my family? What am I believing about you know, God's ability to provide, God's ability to heal? God's ability to protect, um, God's ability to increase, right? Um, God's ability to change me, transform me, and cause me to be fruitful. Right? What is it that I'm believing that is causing fear? What is it that I'm believing that that is causing this deep sense of disappointment? What is it that I'm believing that is you know, causing this deep feeling of insecurity? Right. What is it that I'm believing about myself? Right? Maybe it's something to do with you know when we meet with people and then immediately there is a sense of insecurity. You know, we, we want to keep away from certain kinds of people. Maybe you know people who are confident and you know successful. And you just shy away. And maybe there's a sense of insecurity, a, a sense of unworthiness. So which means you know when we feel that sense of unworthiness. That means that we are believing something about ourselves that is causing that unworthiness, right? Um, or maybe it could be in about any other area. It's, it could be about, uh, you know, so it could be a sense of fear, it could be a sense of unworthiness, disappointment, unworthiness, insecurity, a sense of insecurity, uh, a sense of deep sadness, and, you know, um, maybe it's some kind of failure, you know, so like saying that. Uh, I've never experienced you know, any kind of success. It's always been failure, 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 over and over. And so, um, so we kind of believe that. You know, this is how it was. This is how it uh, it was with my grandfather. This is how it was with you know the, that generation and generation before me. And and this is how it will be. I'll never amount to anything. You know, lies like that. Right, so, so what do we do? We renounce those lies. We renounce those lies because we know that the truth of God's word says something which is exactly opposite of that. Right, and we we know that lie brings torment. Okay, um, a lie does not accomplish anything good because it is source of lie is is not God. The source of lie is the father of lies. He kind of manufactures lies and spreads it all around. So we don't have to receive. We don't have to, you know, uh, our response should be to renounce it. Okay, so say, take some time to just renounce those lies. Uh, whatever the Lord is pointing in, um, pointing us to you know, saying that this is what you've been believing. So renounce that lies. So come out of that intimidation, come out of that sense of unworthiness, come out of that sense of insecurity, 
and be free in the presence of God. May His truth now set you free today. Hail Musumu Tekasi Baba. Hey. And the next thing to do is, even as we renounce lies, we renounce any kind of dedication you know, that was made over our lives. We renounce it. Uh, we cancel it. We renounce any kind of, uh, you know, uh, which, which was maybe done over us. Uh, maybe some kind of thing that was that has opened the door of the enemy uh, for any spirit to come into our lives and influence us and. Uh, so we, we can pray something like this. In Jesus' name, I cancel and negate and nullify all the dedications, all prayers, all rituals, all sacrifices and vows, whether I unknowingly, whether I knowingly I made it, I, I cancel it, or any of my ancestors to false gods and goddesses, I cancel, I cancel the consequent the effect of that. I cancel those things which is made and I cancel all involvement of immediate family or my ancestors in the occult in the occult practices i cancel it in the name of jesus and i declare in the name of jesus and i sever all ties i cut all ties i break all ties towards any of these demonic powers in the name of jesus i renounce all association to demonic powers i renounce it in the name of jesus I cancel all curse and spells and witchcrafts and enchantments and anything that was pronounced over me or my family, either knowingly or unknowingly, in ignorance, anything that we might have entered into, any kind of association, any kind of um, any kind of a covenant that we would have entered into with the demonic spirits, we break it right now in the mighty name of Jesus. And also in the you know, just go ahead and just expel. I have to take authority in Jesus name in Jesus name you bind you know say I bind and expel a dict out of my life any kind of unclean spirit your spirit of lust your spirit of uh, fear your spirit of uh, infirmity um, you know every uh, unclean every familiar un uh, familiar spirit um, everything every influence of it we expel it right now we cancel your power right now you have no influence right now Whatever inroads you have made, we cancel it and we say, yes, no more. We will not tolerate any work of the enemy. We take authority in Jesus' name. We shut any door, we shut any open door in the name of Jesus. No more access into our lives. No more access into the lives of our family. No more access in the name of Jesus. We cancel it. In the name of Jesus, we cancel it. And then we, you know, we present our members to Christ. We consecrate our mind and will and emotions uh, to the Lord. And uh, as we see in Romans 6, we, we, we present our members unto righteousness. We present ourselves unto the Lord. On Thessalonians 4, and uh, you know, it says that we, verses 1 to 7, that we know how to possess our vessel in sanctification and in honor so we can consecrate ourselves so we can pray something like this lord lord jesus i consecrate my entire being to you spirit soul and body my mind my thoughts and my entire members god i consecrate to you completely fully to you alone my body is the temple of the holy spirit i acknowledge that my body is not for sin my body is not for sickness my body is not for any work of the evil one my soul belongs to the Lord Jesus. My spirit belongs to the Lord Jesus. My body belongs to Jesus. I consecrate my emotions, my feelings, my appetites, my passions, desires, everything to the Lord Jesus. They are holy unto the Lord. They are holy unto the Lord. And you now just invite the work of the Holy Spirit. Just invite the work of the Holy Spirit to bring wholeness, to bring restoration. Say, I welcome you, Lord. Welcome, Holy Spirit. Come and have your way. God, come and have your way, O oh God. Yes, Lord, strengthen what was done. Lord, establish what was done right now. We thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you. Hallelujah. You know, what you can, uh, yeah, in Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Yeah, what you can do is also, you know, later during the day when you're free, you can do it in a very, uh, you know, I know we just took about, you know, 
45, 40 minutes, whatever, to do this. But um, you know, we can we can take some time. You know, maybe at some place we need to uh, just pause and ponder, and you know, take some time deal with these things. But but we can do that, right? We can engage um, with uh, with the Word of God and invite uh, the presence of the Holy Spirit, and um, and maybe the, the Lord will show certain things. Right, um, and uh, we go with that. We allow him to lead us, and that we can use this as a guideline, and we can do this, you know, uh, as an ongoing thing. You know, certain things that we will look at in our next class, um, what we need to establish as an ongoing lifestyle, right, uh, and these things will further uh, enable us, empower us, to walk in uh, that kind of a victory, right? Okay. So thank you. We'll we'll stop here and we'll continue in our next class. God bless. Thank you.